and this is the most amazing line. She says, what wrestling audiences really want is someone they can have faith in. I'm like, no. <laughs> wrestling what? fans want a homoerotic release that still seems manly. <laughs> yeah, I've been to wrestling matches, and what people at wrestling matches want is a dentist. They do not want <laughs> someone to have faith in, okay? They were giving away promotional wife beaters. Don't tell me about it. <laughs> have faith in something. And that's a stick. That's a kind of stick, by the way, to wrestling people. <laughs> God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because there are only so many doors you can slam your dick in. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting to my immediate left is my good friend, Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Thank you. Very excited. Wrestling movie. Wrestling movie. And sitting 81 miles to my right once again is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, it's so good to have you back in the uh, in the hot seat there. Oh, it's good to be back, John Chandler. <laughs> this is a great party for it. We do sound like that. <laughs> this, is, this is what I'm doing the entire show in this voice. It'll be fun for about 44 seconds, and then you'll get the most complaints you've ever had. It turned into a pirate. No, I, I, was, I was waiting for it to turn Australia in there. So, uh, so how was the honeymoon, bro? It was good. I don't know why everyone talks about, like, b sex being such a big deal. I had it for the first time, and uh, <laughs> Anna watched. Um, by the way, everyone owes me money. I can catch a sheep. I can catch a sheep, so apologies. The true Eli Irish Bosnick. experience. Awesome. <laughs> Awesome. Glad you got it all out. So tell us, Heath, and you've already hinted, but I what have. will we be breaking down today? All right. Very excited. We watched The Masked Saint. <laughs> it's uh, it's the story of this hilarious rich guy who pays for all the stuff at his church, <laughs> but, then he, but then he gets embarrassed into not doing that anymore by the new pastor, who's kind of a dick. And, and the pastor, by the way, used to be a Christian... Uh, Sex gimp themed wrestler <laughs> yep. who may or may not also become a masked vigilante, mm -hmm. which is either good or bad. <laughs> the movie hasn't decided. No, no. And Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you liked Nacho Libre, but you thought to yourself, damn it, take this seriously. <laughs> You're going to love this movie. This is a movie that posits a universe, and we need to figure this out because the whole movie doesn't make any sense. This movie posits a universe where wrestling is real, uh, yeah. <laughs> but all fighting looks like wrestling. <laughs> because as we will learn throughout this movie, no matter where people fight, they do wrestling fighting with the like, they're napping in a re he fights someone in a street fight and he naps. He's like, yes. uh, uh, and the guy's like, oh, he's like trying to find turnbuckles to lie against. I have no idea what the reality of this movie is, but it's magical. Every second of it is glorious. <laughs> and it'll just get worse as we go. Yeah, yeah. That statement will come into sharp focus by the end of Act 2. And I, I've got to say, I was kind of worried about this movie because, like, from the preview, it actually looked kind of good. And, like, it had high production value and, and the camera seemed to be in the right place. And it, and, and it was, right? Like, this was a moderately well-directed movie. The acting was okay. So I was nervous that it wouldn't be bad enough. But after watching this fucking movie, I feel like we could do a full two hours just on the plot. <laughs> yeah, it is the about. craziest plot. It is like a woman, an old woman with Alzheimer's trying to shout over the wrestling you're watching on TV. <laughs> <laughs> it, anyway, so she's on the slammer come. Hey, he loves you, don't you? I, are you my grandson? And the crisper. <laughs> this movie doesn't know what this movie's about. No. <laughs> No, and it never decides, no. Uh, so is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Oh, I, I'm going to say best worst literary allusion to a Eugene O'Neill play <laughs> as related to professional wrestling and the name of a okay, character. Okay, all right. Competitive yeah, category. We'll get, we'll get there. You'll, you'll, you'll hear. I'm glad I could top that one out. Eli? 
Uh, I'm going to go with quickest fill of a Christian movie bingo card. They really, oh, they went no. for the all square. <laughs> Shit. You got, this. I, at a certain point I was like, I, I kept writing like, oh, Christian movie bingo in my notes. And I was like, okay, they're not going to want to hear that. <laughs> they'll get it. <laughs> this is a lot of, this hits a lot of beats. But yeah, it is the <laughs> fastest, most complete fill of a Christian movie bingo card I could possibly imagine. Yeah. It's like they saw the bingo card in advance. Yeah. Amazing. There was that guy in a luchador's mask who bought one at the New York Live show. Uh, oh, shit. <laughs> well, if there's one thing this movie taught me, it's that fuck transitions. Rowdy. Rowdy. Yeah, the, the, thanks for having me in, guys. Man, I cannot tell you how excited we are to have a real professional wrestler be a part of this project. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. Uh, yeah, glad to be here. Good. Cool. Cool. Cool, 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 yo. So, quick change. You know how wrestling is, like, well-rehearsed stage combat and acrobatics? Yeah, yeah. All right, all right. But for this movie, we're thinking, like, what if wrestling was real? Uh, uh, what? It's, yeah, like, you, we want the fight at the end to be real. So, like, the fight, our hero can win. Yeah. But, but like, it's... It's it's choreographed. Uh, real real fighting doesn't look like wrestling. People don't jump on other people in fights. You well, guys, well, well yeah, yeah, but 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 like in this movie though, it will be. Yeah, yeah. Because at the beginning, uh, the Reaper breaks the masked saint's leg on purpose, and and you let it happen. Yeah. Well, wait, I I I just let one performer uh, assault. Another performer? Yeah, I, yeah, because if you don't, then he'll you, you'll sue him for not letting you let him get Oh, broken. sue him? What? Yeah. Sue him? Uh, 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 sue uh, him. Uh, sorry, sorry. Um, Let me get this straight. I, is wrestling real in the movie or, or not? We are yeah. not 100% sure. I, it's no, like it's fixed like, boxing. Yeah, there you go. That's pretty much it. Um, I'm sorry. This, this just sounds so in, incredibly stupid. I mean... I fucked a frog in the movie I'm most known for, and nobody is going to buy this. This is so oh. much worse than that. Uh, sorry, I forgot. It's a Christian movie. Oh, never mind. I'm in. I'm in. Cool. Good to hear. Good, Christian. good to hear. Good, good, yeah. good. Um, glad do I, do I get to fuck a frog, though, again? Sure, sure. Um, yeah, I yeah, yeah, we can bring one to your trailer. We still have Kirk Cameron's old fuck frog if you want to use that. I want a new one. New fuck frog. Rider. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for the breakdown and before we even get to this movie i just want to say oh the t and the word saint is a cross how cl <laughs> fuck you <laughs> fuck well, look, you you know your movie's gonna be pretty freaking fresh if your logo is a guy skateboarding on a fucking half pipe. <laughs> <laughs> like the kids do these days is that officially called divorce dad films or is that <laughs> something that they <laughs> Yeah, so we're going to start this out. Like, okay, so this is going to be a consistent theme throughout this movie. This this movie has no idea what poor people's shit look like. Um, so we're going to start this movie out in, like, suburban Rwanda, where our main character grew up with a bad dad whose mom hasn't seen him since last month. Right, and we, we see this because he is sitting outside on the porch, and they're having an exposition-only fight. Like, <laughs> yes. oh, listen, you're an improper father. Oh, yeah? Well, I'm about to abandon our son. You think that'll give him issues? <laughs> you're damn right it will. <laughs> All right, bye. <laughs> yeah, the, the whole first scene, it seems like a commercial for, like, Wrangler domestic abuse jeans starring <laughs> Matt Favre, and he's walking. It's horrible. <laughs> It's also inspired by true events, this story, is what we learn right away. Mm -hmm. yeah. Also, fake wrestling. <laughs> it's inspired by KFAB. This there. movie's inspired by true <laughs> events, KFAB. Good job. So, yeah, so, but basically what we're learning is that, you know, he had angry parents and an absent dad and no money, and he had to do chores. And then in the next scene, we learn that he also used to get his ass kicked by bullies. Right, and and this bully fight seems to consist of him being pushed down and getting up again. Yeah, mm -hmm. Uh, the bully is also speaking entirely in, like, subconscious knowledge. <laughs> He's like, you can't take it. You're so small. By the way, the Eli Bosnick story. <laughs> He's like, 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 literally like, hey, I'm a big bully. I have issues at home. That's why I'm picking on you. Yeah, right, right. Well, they, which is how everyone talks in this fucking movie. <laughs> Throughout. <laughs> right. 
So yeah, so like the kid, they, they, we see this kid beating him up, and he's got a, like a, a really crappy bl- body blow, but it's enough to knock little pussy Christopher down. Well, it's a full grown adult with a backwards hat that's well, beating it. up this actual <laughs> second grade kid, and the, the class loves it. They're going nuts. Like yeah, a prison yeah. yard fight, fight, fight. Yeah, everyone is gathered around. All the little girls and boys want to see him get his ass kicked. And honestly, if you're going to go there, go all the way. Make him piss on the kid like in Kung Fu Hustle or don't waste my fucking time. (laughs) Don't try to pretend like this is bad. No one even had to see his dick. He didn't get thrown into a dumpster or anything. Never mind. (laughs) Um, So, yeah, so now we see little Chris uh, uh, watching wrestling after he got his ass kicked and learning the... Footsie hold. What was this? The patented toe hold that can you can break legs this way. With a toe kids, hold, kids don't try it at home. Yeah, I, it's absolutely ridiculous. You cannot. You could mildly bruise a shin with these <laughs> logic. Like worst case scenario, too hard, too hard. Stop, and that's it. <laughs> and what's so amazing is that we're supposed to believe that he just like visually learned this from watching it once. In his yeah. poor couch, like he just watched wrestling and now he's a kung fu master. I'm like, quick, turn on Cosmos, kid. You'll send a rocket to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. And th- this part, this little message here is actually kind of accurate. Using a WWF move that you learned once on TV that day to go into a real fight with, that's exactly like using religion to make life choices in reality. <laughs> so I think that's a fair I think that's a great way yeah, to thin yeah. the gene pool. I've seen some videos go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I hit Billy with the chair, but he didn't pop back up again. I blame him. <laughs> <laughs> All lives matter, Billy. All lives. <laughs> so, yeah, but instead we cut to a scene of him using his new wrestling move to beat up the bully. So basically we get like a 30 second karate kid. Yeah, yeah. but it's. It's the weirdest move you could possibly imagine. Like, you could almost imagine a kid, like, managing to pull off a sleeper hole, which he later uses in the movie, so that would make sense. Or a chokehold, or something fairly basic. But it's the weirdest, most kung fu, most absurd. It's a weird, like, (laughs) he rolls under his leg and then ties his leg up with his and squeezes his toe up against his ass. It's the just craziest (laughs) thing in the world. Yeah. So now we cut to today, and there will be wrestling. And I just want to say in advance, I did not jerk off during the locker room scene at all. (laughs) (laughs) Nothing gay about this scene. Just a bunch of dudes in a locker room (laughs) greasing up their (laughs) topless, muscular bodies. (laughs) There's no reason why the director spent 7 to 12 minutes just slowly (laughs) tracing every line of these extras who will never come back again. Mostly, yeah. At which point we are introduced to Iceman, who is dressed like a fucking... C- c- ice cadet in the capades. I- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he looks like Princess Elsa's gay best friend from the Frozen <laughs> Ice Capades. Yeah. Shit. And he's he's right next to the the Reaper, who we're gonna find out is the bad guy. He's like doing bicep curls with two pianos and a metal bar and <laughs> oiled up. And the Reaper really like just call him the Plunder Taker. Commit yeah. to the stealing. <laughs> Come on. The Schmundertaker. <laughs> I loved the fucking, uh, uh, the, 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 the Reaper was his name. Okay. So I looked this guy up on IMDb. This is a list of his former roles, a sampling, if you will. These are all real. Bouncer, thug, Django glamour, bouncer again, <laughs> little John, the big man, big Mitch, big deal, bouncer again, biker Bob, bullet maker, mercenary number one, top mercenary, treason, the reaper, satanist, and nude person making out. <laughs> oh, that was in Max Payne. That was in a there big- was Oscar buzz for nude person making out. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know so- but I also want to point out the uh, g- gay Mr. Freeze's son. Is he supposed to be gay? Like, he looks like Mr. Freeze's rebellious gay son, but is he supposed... Because he wanders into this movie twice, and he's like, Hey, what's going on? You excited for the wrestling? And then Roddy Piper comes over. Okay, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm getting ahead of myself, but... Is that character supposed to be gay? That's my question. I can't imagine how How he's not... not He's wearing eye makeup. Oh, yeah. And, like... His signature thing is to like blow a kiss. Uh huh. And then shiver. It's, and then shiver. He's Iceman. 
Yeah. Okay. I feel like that actor improvised that. Like, wasn't aware of what wrestling was. And they were like, bro, so you just make up your own thing? And he was like, don't worry, I've got it. And they were like, should we? And he was like, oh, I'm sure he'll watch some wrestling and figure it out. And he just showed up today and he was like, I used one of my old cheerleading uniforms. What do you think? And they were like, yeah, man, great. <laughs> Super good. Wrestlers do wow. their eyes like this, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Certain kinds of wrestlers. <laughs> Um, and of course, the, one of the like the main reason for this scene to exist, other than homoeroticism, is so that we can meet the the promoter, the fight promoter, Nikki, played by Rowdy Roddy Piper in the last thing he did. Rowdy Roddy so Piper. The, he's the Ratzenberger of this movie. Yep. Ruined. Yep. It. <laughs> and he he's going for it though. He's one of the better actors. He went with a whiskey throat cancer accent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How do you tank your career when you're famous for hell comes to Frogtown? <laughs> that takes some real talent. I'm the guy known for fucking a frog with boobs in my post-apocalyptic Mad Max movie before Mad Max came out. But I'd like to tank that. I'd like to shame that legacy. <laughs> I made a movie about how I had a magic dick and this is worse. <laughs> Sounds like Eli made some of that up. Not at all. No, nope. that's all. No, right. that's, that's, I had to look it up. So yeah. <laughs> Sorry, man. My browser history is just not as interesting as yours. So, <laughs> yeah. But 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 he. What we're supposed to learn here is that he's a dirty fight promoter, and he doesn't like the fact that. Okay, th th we haven't even mentioned the main character, the saint, right? The, the the one guy that doesn't look like a wrestler in this group. I mean, the gay guy is at least built like a wrestler. Um, but he's retiring. This is his last night as a fighter, and Rowdy Roddy Piper is not very pleased by that at all. Right, and he wants him to take a dive. Yeah, what in wrestling? It's it's the choreographed fight, choreography, <laughs> acrobatics show. He wants him to read the script that they have in this thing. <laughs> exactly. yeah. This would be like a this would be like a scene from a movie where someone walks up to Hamlet before the play and is like, "Tonight, Hamlet dies." <laughs> <laughs> yep, I don't want to. That's how the play goes. <laughs> I assume we had several weeks of rehearsal. Well, that's <laughs> and, and and that's the thing. Like my note right here is like this movie thinks God and wrestling are real. I don't know which is more bizarre, but they're filled with wrestlers. So like, what? None of the wrestlers <laughs> who did the wrestling in this movie were like, "Hey, man, you know this is all choreographed, right?" People don't generally help their opponents up onto the turnbuckles in a real fight. <laughs> <laughs> Well, okay, but so here's the thing, though. Like, then we cut to the – because I have a theory on this, right? Because then we cut to the wife uh, as he's wrestling, right? And he's getting beat up and he, she turns to the daughter and goes like, uh, oh, don't worry, honey. It's just acting. So I'm wondering if the director just thinks that's something that you tell kids, right? Like that Santa Claus is real. You just tell kids that it's all acting. <laughs> yeah. So every time one of the wrestlers in the movie said, hey, dude, it's it's just acting. It's not real. He would look at him and wink and go, right, exactly. And look around. <laughs> Got oh, it. Somebody's daughter. You don't here. want to give anything away. You and me are on the same page. <laughs> yeah. Why are you wet? The same page. <laughs> <laughs> but this is the first time we get to see our hero in the ring, right? And his signature move... Would anyone like to describe what happens in his signature move? Oh, you mean the faith breaker. The faith breaker. Yeah. Um, yes. so, faith breaker. Uh, that's when you, um, when you roll through a standing 69 with another gentleman. Uh -huh, yeah. And, <laughs> and then do nothing. Yeah, right. Uh -huh. And then drop to your knees and pray. And I think it's the nothing part, and it hurts the other guy's face a lot. <laughs> it's his, and he kind of explodes away. face region. And also, isn't a faith breaker something that would make you into an atheist? I mean... <laughs> is he making atheists out of his well, opponents? That's they didn't show the full thing. What happens is he drops to his knees to pray, notices nothing happens, looks around, pulls a copy of the God Delusion out of his outfit, <laughs> reads through it really quickly, throws it away, takes his mask off, and fucks whoever he wants to. It's a whole thing. <laughs> they just showed a part of it in the thing. You got to imagine the rest. Faith Breaker is a pretty common move, actually, among wrestlers. I, I see. Um, yeah. I, I have another question about the moves. Is there a move called a tender hand? holding slam <laughs> in real wrestling fake real wrestling because they seem to be, be focused on that too that was a pretty cool move what's amazing is that you if for anyone who watches wrestling and i watch quite a bit of it because it's, it's very, very interesting intellectually to me <laughs> you can you can recognize all of wrestling's moves being done by terrible people this is basically if heath and i had decided to try to do the nutcracker <laughs> like <laughs> 
I thought we did pretty well. I thought we did well. <laughs> Whatever. Like, people would recognize what we were going for, but they definitely wouldn't think it was the Nutcracker. The outfit sold it. We, I mean, everybody knew what was happening. Our dancing wasn't great. And, of course, he's fighting the Reaper, who's being, like, who might as well have main bad guy tattooed across his fucking forehead. Right. And also, (laughs) just to be throw this out there, it's based on The Undertaker, which I take a ton of offense at, because The Undertaker, in real life, that guy, super duper nice, and created a charity for big dogs. So fuck this movie. I'm just saying. There's there's wrestlers who went crazy and killed their family. Why can't you use that guy? No, you gotta use The Undertaker, because he wears white makeup. They also messed up his makeup, too. They just dressed him up like the crow. He's the crow on the face, (laughs) and then just a muscular man below that. Like, Sting with clown makeup and the crow. Yeah, they they went for a lot of steals. Yeah. Yeah. He looks like Chris Angel got his medication mixed up with Bane. <laughs> <laughs> so, and much like Bane, apparently, because wrestling is real, after the fight is over and after our hero has tapped out and, and, and taken the fall that he had to take, despite the normal legitimacy of wrestling, this actor breaks his goddamn leg. And does not get sued for millions of dollars and go to jail for assault. No, no. <laughs> you're not allowed to cripple someone while act- you get charged with assault for that. This isn't Passion of the Christ. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, when we do podcasts with other people, we don't get to like stab them because we're doing art at the same time. <laughs> I wasn't allowed to shank Smalley. Thought we were doing that charity thing again. You said we could do meth because we're on stage. I thought this was part. <laughs> no? All right. <laughs> Lesson learned. Next time. Andrew told me to invite a 14-year-old girl to my house for wine. And I, just... <laughs> I did it. I did it. I took advice from a podcast. Well, you know. <laughs> they say don't take advice, but it's with a wink. You know, Is like that... wrestling's not real. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> don't take legal advice from a podcast. I see. I get you. Um, so, so now we go away. Okay. So like he's, he's gotten his leg broken and now it's like weeks or months later or some amount of time later and, and they're moving, um, you know, so that he can be a pastor. Now Mm -hmm. they're moving to Michigan, which is the least realistic part of this movie. (laughs) Jesus exists and a man is a masked vigilante. Nobody moves to Michigan. Well, they're moving to the the bad part of Michigan. Yeah, what? right. The, the ghettos of Michigan, the bad side of the tracks of Michigan. Now, Noah, which part of Michigan is the good side of the track? Is that a real place? Where, where, wherever the lake that uh, Lake Michigan separation between Illinois and Michigan is, I think there's a track <laughs> that runs under. Yeah, no, it's like yeah. Oh, the shitty part of Michigan. I see <laughs> the populated one. You mean? Yeah, they said they're going to Michigan, and they were like, "This is going to a troublesome area." And I was like, "They're." This movie takes place in Detroit, and this movie was like, no, we are not <laughs> going to set a movie in Detroit. We don't even, we drove around it. This whole thing, no. <laughs> there are no shots of the signs of the state of Michigan. That's how far away from actual Michigan this movie well, stayed. It the, was in, they're absolutely not in Michigan. Yeah, they're in Ontario, Canada, right? Yeah. Yeah. So they're, they're, it's close to Michigan. And the story's based on stuff that happened in Florida. Why not just go, like, they couldn't afford to shoot in Alabama <laughs> or Michigan even? They had to go yeah, to Canada. Right. right. <laughs> Get some affordable health care for that broken leg thing that you're oh, allowed to do is... legally, I guess. <laughs> We also learned that the dog's name is Piper. Mm -hmm. A little irony there, because they got a real wrestler in there. This is a little joke for everyone who knows wrestling. It's like, hey, remember this guy? Huh? This would be like if Hulk Hogan was in the movie as the maid, and they were like, oh, and this is our cat, Hulk. And he's like, nice name for a cat. I'll go back to cleaning the dining room table now. (laughs) Wash, wash here, wash, wash there, and a couple of tra la la (laughs) I'd watch that. Um, so, so, and then, of course, the mom and the dad have to have uh, some exposition for a few minutes. And like, and, and it's this happens over and over again in this movie. I, I, I won't point it out every time. But the extent to which they're talking about, like, well, it's been four weeks, and you can finally walk on that leg. Are you sure you want to move to the bad part of Michigan with me? We're moving to the bad part of Michigan. Like, the, the, it's that for like forty five seconds, and uh, it's all stuff that you could intuit from the opening little montage of them showing up anyway yes 
But for the old women who watched this movies in theater, and trust me, I usually watch these movies with these women. <laughs> I'm sure that they did. They were like, "Oh, okay, I get it now. They're moving to Michigan. I don't understand." <laughs> This isn't as complex as War Room was. That movie was a puzzle. <laughs> the fucking inception of Christian movies over oh, here. Shit. Also, can we talk about their physical appearances? Mom's pretty hot, right? Mom's mom's not bad looking. Mm-hmm. But he looks like Robert Sean Leonard from House got punched in the face forever. He looks like Robert Sean Leonard took up wrestling after House. He was like, well, if I can't play a cancer doctor anymore, just mash my face into the pavement until it's the exact same size and shape. Yeah, I had Scott Bakula fuck the Mickey Mouse, but yeah, that's pretty much. You the could same use thing. this guy's face as a wood plane. <laughs> you could fucking hang pictures with this guy's face. I did enjoy Mom though. Absolutely, she looked kind of like you know Britta from Community. She kind of looked yeah. like Britta, but like half baby teeth, half adult teeth. <laughs> that was- in a good way though. Ooh. Yeah. It was nice. Yeah, she she looks like Britta gave up on her dreams. It's like <laughs> Rachel Adams, but all eyes. So. And I want to point out, we meet the daughter in this scene as well, who's very good. She does a she's very adorable. good job in this movie. She's, yeah, she's a very good actress. In this yeah. terrible film. She won't return my calls. <laughs> oh, she doesn't want your wine. <laughs> Andrew told me. <laughs> At opening arguments. <laughs> <laughs> and now we we arrive at the fictional Rolling Springs, Michigan, yeah. um, where it's it, admittedly it's snowy and shitty, just like I remember Michigan being. Uh, my music note here is Curious George is going to open that jar one way or the other. Yeah. <laughs> my music note here was, and all the animals were there. Yeah, right. <laughs> I had a music note, too, of, about animal. Damn it. No. <laughs> he couldn't quite pull it off. And I got to say, this town doesn't seem to have a very thriving business sector, but it has some pretty good looking hookers out in the middle of the day. Uh, it has yes. a Las Vegas Boulevard amount of hookers yes. in this <laughs> tiny, tiny. It's ridiculous. 90% of uh, this town's income is hookers. Uh, apparently, it is a hooker based <laughs> yeah. economy. Yeah. And also, by the way, look, cause, okay, so when we were getting the exposition from mom and dad, not only were they moving to the wrong side of the tracks, but they were moving to a church that had financial troubles and was in a bad neighborhood and blah, blah, blah. Um, when they show up at this church, it is goddamn enormous. <laughs> it's really, I mean, maybe this town would have some money if the the giant large building that's the only nice thing there paid property tax. I'm just, <laughs> that would yeah, help. Just you know, it's first step. basically the cathedral at Notre Dame, and they pull up and they're just like, "Hmm, sure, hope we can upkeep it." And I'm like, "Really? Yeah, I think you can get this this papal sized chapel under wraps." <laughs> Right, so th- so they come in, this is his new church, he's the new pastor here or whatever, and so this is where we're going to meet the supporting cast. Uh, we got Tim, who is the church's treasurer uh, that we meet here, uh, Mrs. Beasley, who is mentally ill, i.e. the comic relief. Yeah, Miss Miss Beasley is like Amelia Bedelia after everyone realizes that she's not okay. <laughs> like she just walks around being like, you know, the Jews started all the wars, right, Mrs. Beasley? I have an organ. You sure do. <laughs> and then we meet Judd Lumpkin. Oh. That is the character's goddamn I stopped the movie Walked across the house, couldn't find my I had to go outside <laughs> to find my wife, and I'm like, there's a character named Judd Lumpkin. He's fant- He's the worst, which is so funny. He's, he's just every stereotype of a rich guy within 12 seconds. He's like, hope we don't meet in court. I'm rich. I'm an asshole. Up is down. Down is up. This is how I think people on Twitter think I am. Like, this is what, if you asked everyone who tweets at me to do an impersonation of me, it's Judd Lumpkin. Yes. I sodomize children with rolls of money. No offense, Pastor. No, no. I know you're not wealthy. And I look like fat John Boehner. Oh, he did. <laughs> Holy shit. I, by the way, I renamed both of my cats Judd Lumpkin just so I can relive that moment now. Um, and, and Judd Lumpkin is unhappy about the new pastor apparently. And, and so he offers him free tickets to a, to a rock show like a dick. Like a dick <laughs> to a Rolling Stones concert. A ro- yeah. Yeah. He's like, I do the lighting for certain bands. It rhymes with moans or something. And it's like, mm-hmm. and he's like, you want tickets? And the pastor's like, no, I don't, what? The moans? The I don't know what dead. that is. That's I don't want to go there. <laughs> but it, and it's like, and 
what we're supposed to learn from this moment is this relatively brash gentleman is the bad guy for now. I mean, he didn't break his leg, although maybe he does later in the movie. He doesn't break <laughs> his leg, but he's the bad guy for being verbose and what? also <laughs> single-handedly financially supporting this church. Exactly. Well, that's what's so bizarre about that. We're supposed to learn simultaneously that this guy is just giving uh, all the money to this church that they need to keep running and he's an insufferable asshole. Like, that seems like a bit... I mean, to me, that's easy, right? A guy who gives a ton of money to his church tends to be an asshole, in my experience. But, like, in this movie, in this movie's world, that seems like a, a like a juxtaposition. Yeah. You wouldn't think... that You'd want to make him, like, a guy who ne who's super rich, but never gives any money. Right. Even though he's on the board, right? That would make this character, like, way less likable than someone who you've painted as a philanthropist with bad social skills that's pretty much <laughs> it well but but again he offers him the fucking rolling stones tickets he says hey you're new in town you should play basketball on my basketball team and again they they set this up as like oh he wants to play basketball like a dick what an <laughs> asshole <laughs> what <laughs> then again our protagonist just beats people up <laughs> <laughs> i don't know randomly. <laughs> who i'm supposed to i like the reaper almost by the end of it um yeah. <laughs> And, and and of course they have to shoehorn this in right. They need somewhere to put their daughter so that she won't be fucking up the next scene. So they suggest that they take her to see Miss Edna, who will watch the daughter. Oh, who's Miss Edna? Just a random black woman. Do we know her? Have we ever met her before? No, we haven't. But I'm gonna leave my daughter there. <laughs> yeah, that's. Is she magical? Because I really want to x off this square. <laughs> have no fear. <laughs> but they, they've they done no investigation. They don't know who this woman is. I gotta tell you, as someone who reports on kids getting molested at churches every week, if this is their policy, you're kind of asking for it, people. You can't just leave your kids anywhere, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but according to this movie, as long as they're black and magical, you're okay. Um, exactly. And I just want to point out that there, I, I don't think that we've ever met a woman a black woman in a Christian movie that was over 35 and didn't have a miss in front of her name and a dead husband. Yeah, check, or check. I don't think we've ever met a black woman in any of the movies we watched who hasn't met our protagonist through a screen door. <laughs> that's, well, that's a weird one, but yeah, no shit. That she's it's, been like waiting there, standing next to it for hours because she's right there when they're uh, not yeah, guaranteed. Yeah, exactly, that second. Actors are panicking for 10 seconds. She's there immediately. Fix it, cut it, forever. <laughs> Yeah, every black woman we've ever watched gets greeted with, hello? Anybody home? <laughs> and then she pops up, what's up, motherfucker? <laughs> it's me! I gotta say though, she's a super hot older woman, Miss, Miss, <laughs> Miss Edna. She's like a, like a, like a black Mary Tyler Moore. Very good look in my opinion. Ooh, I get Serious. it. I get it. Yeah. yeah. I like the big glasses. Had a librarian thing going. Mm. That was, that worked mm, for yeah. me. Dan, 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 dan. <laughs> also, we learned that the congregation has dropped by half because Judd Plumpkin is a dick. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right? Yes. And and the pastor immediately is like, maybe I need to fuck him up in the ring. And the, one, uh, and the wife is like, honey, right? Remember? Not fighting anymore. And he's like, right. Sorry. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> and I really wanted a montage of him doing wrestling things when he was supposed to be a pastor. Like, <laughs> my son's been skipping school. The stunner. And like, yeah, I don't know what to do since my husband died. Have you tried one of the leg locks? <laughs> like, Honey. Just a comedy montage. <laughs> All right. This movie deserves a sequel now. Um, so now we Crazy get the- Crazy billionaire the, money. <laughs> <laughs> now we get the, uh, the scene where they're like going door to door to, 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 to talk people into coming into their church. And it's, you know, one door slam after another. And I, I just want to point out that it's bizarre to me that in these movies, we've seen this a, a dozen times now, like the scene of everybody going door to door and getting the door slammed on them. And the message here is not like, hmm, if that many people slam the door on you, you must be a douchebag. It's, but yeah, we better try harder. Right. And it also, People don't slam the door in pastors' faces all the time. If a pastor came and introduced himself, I wouldn't slam the door. I'd be like, yeah, nice to meet you. And he'd be like, you should come to services. And I'd be like, no. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Can you say that into a mic now. for me? Come, come inside. <laughs> We're going to record that. Say it into a mic. Also, I want to point out, at one point, a guy just closes the door because he hates white people, apparently, because they <laughs> walk up and he's like, hi. And he's just like, nope. <laughs> 
apparently Michigan has a giant community of atheists that I haven't heard about. Uh, yeah, right, right. It seemed like a pretty cool, groovy place to live. Um, and yeah, so, and then of course he's got still overcoming the, uh, the, the broken leg or whatever. So now the walking is getting too hard and he wants to go home, but his wife pushes him on because fuck medical necessity. Yeah. Her answer is, have we tried our best? And he's like, am I a grown up? And she's like, no. And he's like, fine. <laughs> One more. But I want Dunkaroos in the car. <laughs> count to three. Flash One, cut to- <laughs> two, two. <laughs> All right. Boy. He just stomps up to the door. <laughs> no one's even there. <laughs> Doorbell lock. And that's pretty much what happens. Well, pretty much, yeah, except for... One an otter pop. <laughs> I don't care if it cuts my mouth. <laughs> but, of course, this time to save the day, the wife chimes in and starts talking because it's a it's a woman about her age that answers the door. Uh, but we also learn here that she has an abusive husband. Right. And we learn she's being abused because she has cartoon lip prints on her arm. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, that, but that's what she's like. She's like, you know what? I shouldn't have invited you guys in. My husband's going to be home soon and you shouldn't be here when he gets there. And wouldn't you know it, abusive husband shows up right then. Abusive husband looks like he's about to warn us about if Trump doesn't win, there'll be taco trucks on every corner. <laughs> <laughs> like that guy in 40 years. <laughs> yeah. And the pastor, uh, Chris, starts having flashbacks. This guy is Bam Bam Bigelow. Ray, this abusive <laughs> husband, is Bam Bam Bigelow. And Chris is having, like, flashbacks. He almost suplexes Ray, but he gets kind of pulled out of there. Yeah. But what's so crazy is that among the many times in this movie when it's like, okay, yeah, violence is necessary right now, an abused woman being herded back into her house by her screaming drunk husband, and they're like, should we call Child Protective Services or make sure that she's safe or anything? And the wife's like, no, no, let's mind our own business. Come on. You can go fight Judge Lumpkin later on. <laughs> right. Um, but this guy is also every abusive husband stereotype you can imagine. Right. right. They, he's, they're in Michigan and he has a fucking Alabama accent. That's true. <laughs> well, you know, his father actually, you know why he hits his wife is because his father actually was super abusive to his younger brother who died face down in the snow when they used to live in Utah. Oh, and he never really got over that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it comes from a long line of abusive stepfathers. <laughs> All the same universe. Um, so yeah, so, so the wife won't let Chris beat up Ray. Um, so instead we, we cut to the, his, like his first effort at pasting. And we're gonna start off with their choir. And, okay, so the, the gag here is, boy, this choir is sure bad. But it's so very clearly people who can sing that, but can't fake singing off key. Like, pick eight random people and they're going to sing significantly better than this group of people are singing. Yeah, and it's supposed to be like a, you can tell it's supposed to be like a churchy joke, cause like, oh my, our choir's not very good either, but it's like, if your choir actually couldn't form notes, you'd just stop having a choir <laughs> until <laughs> they learn to sing. You wouldn't just bring an old woman up there to be like, plant, 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 sorry, we don't have anyone who can play the organ. Plant, plant, plant. <laughs> you done, Mrs. Beasley? I made a poop warms. Alright. <laughs> yes, organ is done now. This is also where Lumpkin is, like, heckling in (laughs) church, which explains why the congregation dropped by half, because he's fucking treating it like Friday at the Apollo. Like, he's like, (laughs) (laughs) fuck you. (laughs) Oh, screeching cats. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty Mm -hmm. funny. They do sound like (laughs) that. They do sound like This is a funny movie. Judd is a funny character. (laughs) I, I beg to differ. And then, of course, we have to get yet another scene of somebody being bad at being a pastor. Oh, and it's the job is so stupidly easy to do that the effort that they have to go through to make him bad at it is even worse than the bad singing. Yeah, he literally just has to say this because you can't do bad preaching because all preaching's bad preaching. Some of it's better, but all preaching's bad preaching. So what they had him, what they scripted out and had him say in front of motion picture cameras was <laughs> faith, faith. Faith, 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 faith. <laughs> and there At was which an point, um here you, and there, yeah. Right. Your church wouldn't drop off. Someone would come up and make sure you weren't Richard Dawkinsing on them. They, <laughs> if you were only able to say the same word over and over again, they wouldn't like lower church attendance or encourage you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, and of course my note here is just, I'm sorry, does some stupid sound better than other stupid? This is what it sounds like to me, right? Like faith, 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 faith. That's what I hear when they talk. 
And I wanted him to break into like wrestler talk because this is a former <laughs> wrestler. So they like, just be like, Sunday, WrestleMania, faith, 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 Sunday. Yeah, it would have been fun. That would have been awesome. Do you want to be saved? Do you want to be grave, <laughs> brother and sister? <laughs> See, it's not hard. It's not hard. I just preached. Yeah, yeah, no, and, I just he's, preached. and, and he's spoken words before. We've seen him do it. Um, and, and I didn't even have to lie about being in the army reserve. See how easy it is to be a preacher black guy for Trump? Shit. <laughs> he lied about lots of things. <laughs> He's the only black guy they could find. <laughs> so, and then of course everybody's leaving, but nobody will even shake his hand because his passing was so bad that they just walk out embarrassed to have been there. Um, except Miss Edna, who still believes in him. So she so shows up to give him a book or something. And she says, I want you to have this. And I wrote in my notes, it's a picture of my sharecropper father. Nope, different movie. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. Also, Tim, the the the, the um, church treasurer or whatever, and to close this scene off, he turns to her and he goes, "Can I take you outside, Miss Edna?" Like, what a weird question to ask a human. <laughs> Why would you strange, ask a yeah. human that? Do you need to go? Do you need to go? Somebody need to go potty? Do you need to go outside? Okay, do your do. Want to go out? Do your do. Go out. <laughs> He's All standing right. by the door with Miss Edna. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> huh? Well, you got to put on your leash. Miss um, Edna gets outside and then immediately wants to come right back in again. Oh, fuck you, Miss Edna. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> you, Miss Edna. You got to shake her bag of food to get her to come. Right. Oh, crazy billionaire money. We remake this movie, but Miss Edna is just a cat. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Edna is just played by a cat. <laughs> How did they miss that? And now it's time for some classic Christian movie sportsing. Now, it's not quite as bad as like when they try to do the wrestling and stuff, but it's not good either. They did have an actual person who's played basketball doing an actual layup correctly. I mean, it's a black guy, so it doesn't really count. I'm not giving him full credit for that. Detective but, uh, black it's guy a detective. to you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. very attractive black man doing a layup. <laughs> so, Successfully. Yeah. But he doesn't do a flip at white people's command, so I didn't really know how to feel about him. <laughs> <laughs> is, is he a bad guy? Is Can he, he do guy? a flip? Can't he? Yeah, they should have tested that. <laughs> and this is such a weird scenario they've set up. Like, the local church versus the local police force yeah like uh -huh. how did they think that was gonna go you have these like young 20 something super fit black guys and miss edna and miss beasley being like come on bitch <laughs> let's do this <laughs> 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 And the, the pastor gets in there too, and he is rough. He's doing like the fundamentally sound chess pass, like the white glove. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> so rough. Great skit. Um, yeah, right. And if the whole point of this scene, of course, is we have to reinforce what an asshole the philanthropist in the movie is. Um, so Judd Lumpkin is just yelling at every, I can't believe I'm just saying that name. Judd, how, what the <laughs> fuck did you think of before you settled on Judd goddamn Lumpkin? Anyway, fat, sounds like a shit porn fat name. Fat asshole. Let's call him Fart Face. He's like a <laughs> nine year old coming up with a, a screen name. Fart, Fart Eater 22. Can we name him Fart Eater? You said I could name one of the characters. No, you can't name him Far Eater. What about Judd Lumpkin? Fine, fine, right, fine. Just shut up. I hate the weekends I get you from your mom. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so now Judd is just pissing everybody off, including the referee who decides to not only throw him off the court, but also ban their team from ever meeting together on a basketball court again <laughs> yeah. or something. Yeah, the, he, I think he actually makes Christianity illegal. <laughs> <laughs> That's next week. <laughs> so, yeah. So and then, of course, I guess Chris, our hero, decides that the way to handle this situation is to assault Judd Lumpkin in front of hundreds of witnesses. OK, well, to be fair, he tries to pull his elbow and Judd like makes a like I'm mad at you gesture so he puts him in a sleeper hole <laughs> right and, and we haven't mentioned by the way that this exhibition basketball game between the church and the police has drawn a, a, a crowd of thousands and yeah. the police are doing nothing there's a man being choked out and they're like nah he's the worst for yeah. a really long time <laughs> yeah. for, a re for a really really dangerously long time <laughs> Like, yeah. And also, he keeps saying, like, the more you struggle against it, the worse it'll get. That's not how chokeholds work. They are very dangerous. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> and if anybody should know that, it's it's the police, but they don't, so it's okay. <laughs> Um, so, but, but, but what happens though is that everyone in this town is just happy that someone finally kicked Judd's ass. And, and like, they all cheer for yeah. the man assaulting the other man. Yeah, exactly. Though some like nine year old kid says, it's about time you got what you had coming to you, Judd. And everybody in the crowd's like, grab your pitchforks, people. Let's go. <laughs> Good old fashioned lynching. They just tear Judd Lumpkin apart like the end of the lottery. <laughs> <laughs> the movie continues without ever acknowledging it. <laughs> but then the cop comes over. So it's all been cleared up, right? And Judd mm-hmm. Lumpkin walks away in a huff. He's not going to support the church anymore because everyone just watched him get strangled on the ground, which I got to say, not an extreme reaction. Like if someone <laughs> choked me to sleep and no one helped, I also would no longer want to help that community organization. <laughs> <laughs> but the cop comes over who insists on being called a detective and he's like weird that you guys are a church aren't you supposed to like not choke each other to sleep in front of a a whole community and the police especially and the pastor's like well shenanigans and then the fucking scene's over <laughs> Also, so it, it, for some reason there was some tell somewhere or whatever so Miss, we see Miss Edna going home and looking through all her old wrestling magazines and figuring out that he's the masked saint. Yeah. Now, they don't explain how she figures. She just intuits that with her magic black lady powers, I guess. Yeah, because it turns out that she and her husband, who are, who is now dead, loved wrestling. Yes, the magical old black lady in this movie was also a huge wrestling fan, apparently. Yeah. If you're a huge wrestling fan, you would know the masked saint, right? We're supposed to believe that the masked saint was the world wrestling champion or the whatever the yeah. equivalent mm-hmm. is. Cause it's, it's supposed to be the WWF. It's not supposed to be like a, a shitty side version of wrestling. So you, that would be like not knowing who the rock Dwayne Johnson is <laughs> right. until he puts someone in a sleeper hold. And then you're like, Hmm, <laughs> this mocha flavored gentleman seems familiar. <laughs> It makes no sense. But anyways, no. we get some money troubles because it's a Christian movie. A Christian movie, bingo. Yeah. yeah. We're out yeah. of money. Uh, no, we're not out of money. And prayer. Yeah. That's that's a- <laughs> Spoiler, they are out of money, and that only gets solved when they do a real thing. Yeah, yeah. the prayer does not help them much. Yeah, and so now we get, okay, so, but of course, Judd had also given them, like, the house that, like, he had an investment property that he gave to the preacher. We learned that when he was being a dick by offering concert tickets and inviting him to play basketball um also that he was going to give him a house free of charge that asshole um so but now but he's he only a- did it for the taxes oh i s- <laughs> you know how you give people free houses for taxes you know well, what a ludicrous business model every- that can be <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, it, it it worked out well. But but it also gave him leverage over the pastor, I guess. So now that the pastor choked him out, the guy who gave you a free fucking house, um, he has to move to a, a new house, which just so happens to be next to abuse husband and abuse wife. What are the chances? I thought it was going to turn into a sitcom, like just like her with a black eye and the other wife like standing back to back. Also... There's this weird scene where because they've moved to a new smaller house, the child has to give away a TV sized box of bears. Yeah. Which they that, didn't have room that's for the- such a dick move. You can't, yeah, you can't fit, fit one box of like stuffed bears into this fairly large new house. Like get, drop a couch, you know, like how are you going <laughs> to tell this little kid? Like I'll just hold these in the middle of the room. I'll just hold, just hold them right here whenever I have them. I'll carry them around the house. Like- never put them down. I feel like they're bears and they can go pretty much anywhere. Don't be a dick about this. We're giving away all your toys except for one. Look at all this space I'm marking out above my bed. That's always empty. <laughs> I'm just going to put them here. Is that? And that's. God damn. No. Apparently not. Um, and so we also get in this moving in scene, we get dad going through his old stuff and he finds his old wrestling mask. And it's like, you remember the, the beginning of the movie 22 minutes ago? That was was awesome. Bring out the gimp. And, of course, just as he's finding his wrestling mask, Miss Edna shows up with cookies because she's old slash black. Yeah. Miss Miss Edna's here for some wrestling tips in case she decides to sell Lucy's or something. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> hey, someone just got it. 
<laughs> Someone was driving in their car and they were like, what are, oh no. Oh man, I just laughed yeah. at that in advance and I feel bad. Judd Lumpkin <laughs> won't make that mistake either again. That's, that's how you learn. That's how you learn. And also, um, small thing, apparently Magical Black Lady was married to Cookie Monster? I guess. Because her husband called them cookies. She does an impression. It's uh, very strange. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, but I'll, they I'll look tell you like what, amazing though, cookies. The, the, the visual of her fucking Cookie Monster is turning me on way more than I thought it would. Mm, so I, get I it. appreciate I get that. It. I've been there. I have some PDFs to send you. So- <laughs> <laughs> they have to be PDFs. You do. They're locked. <laughs> Also, this is where we get the beginning of a porn because the wife comes out and she goes, Miss Edna, I could smell your cookies from the back. And then Miss Edna's like, can I borrow your husband? And I'm like, I'm into it. Starting to lube myself up <laughs> on a plane from Ireland. But no. I heard your no. card catalog is broken. <laughs> I can't fly Aer Lingus anymore. <laughs> By the way, it's Cunnilingus, not Aer Lingus. You guys are assholes. You, you, you lied to me. <laughs> lied to me. That stewardess was mad at us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so for whatever, like, this is a normal thing. The old black woman they just met is, shows up and says, I want to go on a date with your husband. And she's like, well, I guess that's okay. Um, so they, we get the two of them driving through all the shitty Michigan-ness, uh, which this is where we learn that Miss Edna kind of digs heavy metal. Um, yeah. I, I, I feel like she's really heavily hinting here that she's into butt stuff. Oh, yeah. Crazy yeah. billionaire money. They just do the crack smoking scene from Training Day. <laughs> like line for line, Miss Edna and the pastor go through the crack. Oh, it'd be so good. <laughs> but instead, she takes him to a wrestling match. Yes. And wouldn't you know it. It's the Reaper fighting tonight, the man who broke his leg, which she would probably know if she's into wrestling. Right. Even though Nick, super best friend, promised that man who assaulted and crippled him wouldn't wrestle anymore. I mean, okay, so are we supposed to believe that Nick doesn't recognize the 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 financial burden that he places on himself if his actors actually break his other actors? Or you, anything, <laughs> anything about this movie. <laughs> right. Well, he was retiring, so it was, uh, it's okay to kill him, right? It's like a horse. <laughs> I thought I would, I would, thought the Reaper was just saving me some trouble. You take him out in the back with one of those knockdown guns and just get him in the back of the head. <laughs> oh, God. So, and I love to, uh, we're watching the first match, the pre-Reaper match. Um, he says, uh, you know, that she's like, oh, listen, look at how the audience is really getting into this. Like they don't during your, preaching or whatever and he's like oh they just love the violence she goes and this is the most amazing line she says what wrestling audiences really want is someone they can have faith in i'm like no <laughs> wrestling what? fans want a homoerotic release that still seems manly <laughs> yeah i've been to wrestling matches and what people at wrestling matches want is a dentist they do not <laughs> want someone to have faith in okay when the beer line's longer than the line for the bathroom, don't talk to me about people wanting something to have faith in, okay? They were giving away promotional wife beaters. Don't tell me about anything. <laughs> have faith in something. And that's a stick. That's a kind of stick, by the way, to wrestling people. <laughs> and, and so this, but this is all a setup for the Iceman who is going to take on the Reaper, I guess. That's the big headline match here. And this is where we get the uh, Eugene O'Neill reference. <laughs> he announces the Iceman as the Iceman cometh as he comes into the ring. And he do- does the blow the chili kiss thing at the it- crowd. <laughs> and they right. all hate him, which is great. Um, <laughs> and does the fake I wanted shiver. him to just do the monologue from the Iceman cometh, like the last <laughs> monologue. Like that's his, that's his heel speech. He just comes out. <laughs> Does the final scene in perfect theatrical <laughs> silence, like just gets hit with a down spot. You don't know what it's like to disappoint someone every day. Just see that disappointment on someone's face. And now the Reaper. <laughs> yeah! I honestly, I, I honestly think they edited that out of the film. If we had it on DVD, we could probably see that scene. Patreon.com forward slash the Iceman Cometh starring Eli Bosnick and Heath Enright. <laughs> It's a two-man production, very simple, 
It's going to go over a lot better than our Nutcacker performance. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine how. Um, and so, of course, because this is the Reapers, I guess the Reapers' like signature move is to actually break the legs of the people he defeats, I guess. Because now, like after he defeats the Iceman, he like you know gets on top of him to break his leg just like he did with the Saint. But the Saint who <laughs> carries his wrestling mask with him I wherever he goes yep. yep has somehow left changed into his old wrestling outfit and now sweeps in and saves the day and they defeat the reaper in a tag team bout yeah yeah the an unannounced tag team wait what the fuck is going on with this he movie he might as well have just driven his car into the ring and <laughs> <laughs> So and and of course now he runs into his promoter outside that wants him back into the wrestling ring um and offers him $20,000 if he'll fight the reaper. But he's like I don't wrestle anymore and he's like you just wrestled. <laughs> you just we are moments after you just wrestling. For free. Why I'm going to give you $20,000 to do that to again. Do you understand? Guy. I'm the bad guy offering you gainful employment and this all makes sense. Yeah. I gave up that life. <laughs> to do something unproductive and um stupid i just wanted to assault that guy who was assaulting <laughs> the gay guy i don't know how this movie works we didn't think this through. No. violence just, is and good. by the way for the people who are listening that are like oh man you really should sum up this movie's plot this is this movie's it's, plot. Yeah. there's nothing it's everywhere we, we don't know what universe they <laughs> inhabit so we don't know how to describe it to <laughs> That's, you when someone drops something, we don't know which direction it's going to fall in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just like a random person running onto the field of a baseball movie and acting. <laughs> like you can't just. Right. And shooting, makes no and shooting a guy about to score a touchdown. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Maybe that is how The Last Boy Scout happened. That's it. That's entirely yeah, possible. You get it. So, <laughs> so now, okay, so now he's leaving. And he stops to throw away his mask, right? Because he doesn't want to get back into wrestling ever. And it's not like they could make another mask. So, but when he goes into this creepy alleyway to throw away his mask, it turns out that there is a, a prostitute being abused by her pimp in that very same alley. Yes, a mo a white, clean model with perfect hair, but a slightly shorter dress, which we all know from movies means hooker. hooker. <laughs> street hooker on the streets of Michigan. Yeah. <laughs> she's a street hooker on the streets of small town Michigan, but she's being abused by her pimp, who, Christian movie bingo, is named Jojo. Oh, Jojo. <laughs> yeah. And she's praying... And Jojo hates praying. <laughs> He's not a big fan. He is literally mad at her for praying. Yeah, yeah, he walks up and then that's, that's how we introduce this, this character is the very first thing he says is, are you praying? You need to stop that shit. And, and that just so happens to be when Preacher Man happens to be in the alley. Yeah. And I gotta say though, Jojo is a moderate improvement from the norm. There, it's not any letter name. It's not the, those are like <laughs> syllables that could make up a name that's sort of. It's true. Better than average. He gets four he, he's he not gets an four acronym. Letters. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> that are pronounced and everything. Also, I, I wrote in here, like, the music is getting progressively worse. Eventually, I'll be raped with a flute. Um, <laughs> <laughs> also, crazy moment when he comes up. So he puts on the mask to go stop him, and he turns to him and goes, who are you, Macho Libre? And it's like, wait, does this movie want to acknowledge that <laughs> there was a comedy <laughs> with this concept? <laughs> Apparently. Like, if I tried to do a serious version of The Clumps, I wouldn't have someone reference The Clumps in that movie. Right, right. Like, about a, a really serious family drama about a morbidly obese family, one of whom keeps turning into Eddie Murphy. Like, if I tried to make a really serious movie, I wouldn't have someone be like, what is this? The Clumps? An earlier movie that was a comedy because this con concept is ridiculous? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So this is where we first learn for certain anyway that in this universe being a wrestler actor. A wrestler actor. an actor, not not like an Olympic wrestler, not a real one, yeah. Um means that you know how to street fight <laughs> against a yeah. pimp with a lead pipe. It's like this is like Tom Cruise winning a dog fight against a real Russian fighter pilot <laughs> in a <minute>. <laughs> Right. <You can't. laughs> 
Just run out. I got this. I got this. <laughs> but as we learn, real fighting in this universe looks like oh, wrestling yes, yeah. choreo because this is where he naps. He punches Jojo and you see him very clearly foot nap because he's used to being on a wrestling stage where it's hard. It's the bouncy stuff and he goes bloom and everyone's like, oh man, he just hit him. But he's on the street and Jojo reacts like a wrestler because everyone who's in this movie is obviously a Christian wrestler and they were just like, how does fighting look? Well, I mean, it looks like this. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, it was goddamn hilarious. You just but- clapped right next to my face. That really, <laughs> that really hurt my ear a little bit. Like, ah, like you didn't hit me, but you know, come on, that was loud. So yeah, so he wrestles him unconscious, I guess, and uh, and then he turns to the to the hooker, and she's like. I was praying uh, to God to help me, and you showed up. So I, I just want to point out that according to this movie, if a hooker prays and a masked vigilante doesn't show up to save her, there is no God. I agree with this movie. <laughs> I think that's a fair way to gauge the number of gods. Also, she says, you're a saint. And he goes, no, miss. I'm just a man. <laughs> Tagline. <laughs> Tagline. <laughs> Yeah, they had nothing. But then he gets back in his van and he's like super happy that he's just violenced. Um, <laughs> it is the happiest we see it. this character. <laughs> yeah. But while he was kicking ass, he missed three calls from his wife. Mm. So as it turns out, when he gets home, the cops are outside. His wife fell and is now at the hospital. And we learn this because abuse wife is telling the cops that, well, abuse husband yells at her to get inside and not help with this police investigation. And this is a great moment where she yells back at Ray, the, the abuse husband. She goes, get back inside and smoke your cigarettes and drink your beer. And Ray, like, he gets like Jason Bourne by this. He, like, looks at her and his face changes and he thinks about it for a second. And then he's like, oh, that's a good idea. That's a great I, idea. I can use a cigarette and a beer again. Yeah, I'm going to go inside. And he just, like, slowly walks inside. So, yeah, so so dad gets home and then they tell her, you know, they tell him, oh, she's at the hospital. She hit her head and fell. So he runs to the hospital for the most bizarre. My wife is at the hospital scene that I've ever fucking encountered. This is my favorite thing in the world. Oh, uh, this seems like something Eli would do. And, and <laughs> if that's what they were going for, if that would make fucking sense. If she had been like prank warring from the beginning of this movie, that would make sense. <laughs> but it doesn't. So he comes in and he's like, what's wrong? She's like, well, the co- doctors did a full workup. There's no tumor. Yeah, I, I fell. So they checked me for all the cancers, Tumors, yeah, right? which I don't have. But big surprise coming. And then she turns to her daughter and goes, do you want to tell him? And I wanted so badly for her to be like, we have AIDS. Dad. <laughs> we are riddled with, don't look away. We are riddled with AIDS. Not HIV. Full, full blown AIDS. AIDS. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Full but no. blown AIDS. <laughs> but- I'm taking some of my bears back. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. But no, instead, but no, she's pregnant. yeah, she's they find pregnant. out that she, and, and again, this will never matter to the movie. There is no, she, she won't have the baby during the movie. She won't be visibly pregnant. There's no reason for this yeah. ever. Just to recap, I don't have a tumor. I have a fetus. That's how yes. she announces to her <laughs> husband that she's pregnant. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Tee hee. Daddy thought you were going to die of brain cancer. You should have seen the look on his face. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, while he's at the hospital, he runs into Commissioner Gordon. Um, <laughs> and they have the most, au- this is their conversation, basically. So, looks like we have a masked vigilante in town. I'm not Batman. Okay, <laughs> weird. <laughs> weird that you would throw that right out there. It's not me. Mm, okay, again, not a suspect at any point. It's, it's me. Right. Getting that feel. <laughs> and then uh, the cop also says, like, he's like, uh, he took out our number one hustler. I'm like, th- is there a board for that too? Oh, they, they've got <laughs> a board think, for everything. If you had a hustler board, you just start arresting them at the top and work your way down. <laughs> yeah, well, now the number two ranked atheist hustler bumps up to the top. Oh, nice. it's, it's a tricky town. <laughs> Kevin Sorbo's wife is writing that one too. <laughs> I see. A little call forward for you there. Um, <laughs> oh, and I want to point out the, uh, we learned that Jojo got knocked out by the saint, but he doesn't remember like who he was because he was wearing a mask. But like, 
The Saint, again, is a former world wrestling champion. Right. This would be like if you were mugging someone in an alley, Hulk Hogan came over and kicked the shit out of you, <laughs> and then when the cops woke you up, you were like, I don't know, he was wearing a bandana. He's the most <laughs> famous <laughs> wrestler in the world. You don't need to watch wrestling to be like, I'm pretty sure it's the most famous wrestler in the world. <laughs> Pretty sure that's who kicked my ass. Do we know who he is? <laughs> yes, we do, because they're all actors. Let me Google it. <laughs> huh, that's who that is. I'll check it out. He wasn't tearing his shirt off at the time. I didn't get it. So <laughs> get it right away. Also, okay, so the, the, we got the scene where he's like back home, or, you know, trying to figure out the church's bills and everything. And this mm. is where Miss Edna's, the book that Miss Edna gave him comes back. We learned that this was her journal. Why not her used fucking tampons? And I, I just, I, it's, it's pivotal to the movie, apparently, so we have to bring it up. But the first thing that struck me, and I'm sure everyone watching this film, the handwriting in this quote-unquote handwritten journal <laughs> would leave you to believe that Miss Edna is a goddamn robot. She's a dot matrix printer. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, Miss Edna's last name is Laserjet. Oh, so, I see. You know, it comes from the <laughs> HP Laserjets. <laughs> yeah. Living in Michigan for many years. Ed, yeah. Also, Carly Fiorina killed her daughter. Too. Oh God, <laughs> dude. <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> Feels good. Uh, she also calls her book "Mastering the Gift," which is my new nickname for female masturbation. Nice, female <laughs> listeners. Please start calling it that. Just every time I, just, I don't know, I was mastering the gift the other night, and uh, just so that people will start urban dictionarying it. That's all I want. Absolutely. Now, I also want I, my I, birthday's I, almost here. <laughs> and I also want to say, okay, so the, the gift that this woman gave him is a journal of her thoughts and script. Like, this is the most boring thing you could possibly give a human being. Yeah, this would be like if for Heath's birthday, I had gotten him the note I keep on my phone of all the things I think up when I'm high. <laughs> <laughs> How come they don't make triple stuffed Oreos? Why are they always in even numbers? <laughs> Happy birthday, Heath. Well, you get the single stuffed and then the double stuffed and you combine them. You take one piece off the one. I've, See, I've already this. your one example is more interesting <laughs> than anything you're going to find in this woman's and, book. And mo the most delicious. Yeah, that by far. <laughs> And meanwhile, back at the church, the, the chorus is still trying really hard to be bad and, I guess, succeeding. It, uh, it's a choir of seven people, and we're clearly hearing, like, 50 people yelling and grunting. That's <laughs> right. the noise. And some of them are some of them are just like, I want to go back to church. <laughs> <laughs> and we should point out, we haven't gotten to talk about it yet, but so much of this fucking movie is about money. Mm -hmm. And how proud they are of their pastor begging everybody for money yep. and making everybody in the church give them money. The major thing this pastor does is take one guy who is giving them some money and make everybody give them lots of money. That well, is the story of what this pastor does at this church. Yeah, because, I mean, this is supposed to be the time where he, like, starts, starts to, like, fight, get get his legs under him as a preacher or whatever. So, like, the first good sermon we see him give, good, of course, is in scare quotes, but uh, it, it, he starts his sermon with, like, we can sure use your money, but you know what? Why not just you do your job for us for free? Can't you? It's, it's like, yeah. it'd be like slavery kind of, but good. I love this part. He's like, any bankers? Raise your hand. Got it. Okay. Construction workers. Good. Plumbers. Cool. Uh, daycare people. And raise your hand. And then right after this, the hooker walks in and I yeah. just want it so bad for him to be like, any sex workers? Raise your hand. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Perfect. See, we can all pitch in. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, so the the hooker walks up, but or, or comes into church wearing her hooker clothes. Those are the only clothes that she has, or is her, her her hooker clothes, I guess. Um, so nobody wants to sit next to her because she's so obviously a hooker. Yeah, does does she still have cum coming out of her? Like <laughs> everyone <laughs> runs away, like she's a leper. Right, right, yeah. As though a hot woman in a short skirt sitting down in a church would make anyone want to go away from that person. <laughs> <laughs> This is the only way church can turn good is when a prostitute sits next to you. Yeah, exactly. Right. 
So, but instead he uses her as an example. He just like stands her up and he's like, Oh, okay. You all think this woman's a whore, a dirty, <laughs> gross, <laughs> disgusting, <laughs> disease infested whore. Is that what you all think? She's like, Hmm, this is not the church experience I was seeking. <laughs> but I'd come in, take a moment to think, maybe reflect on my spiritual life. But this is fun. This is a new way. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, yeah, right. I'm feeling nervous because everyone's look at, looking at me. So stand her up and make everybody look at her. And while he's doing that, he's like, ah, it seems like these assholes out here are judging you. What a bunch of judgmental assholes. Right. Let me do the cast the first stone thing like oh, Jesus did exactly. with Mary Magdalene. Right. Yeah. He actually he makes a line in, on the ground with his toe. Like, anyone cross this line that I'm drawing if you've never sinned? And then moments later... Everyone crosses the line he just made. That's what yeah, when they all come up to greet her. <laughs> right. Guys, remember my line? Remember remember earlier? <laughs> There's also this great moment where the, the mom and the daughter get up first. They're the first ones to be like, oh, welcome to the church. And I wrote in my notes, okay, don't give your daughter hep C just to make a point. Come on. <laughs> get an antiseptic wipe. And, She's and already got AIDS. You it's hard enough. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Do you want to tell him? <laughs> so... <laughs> They actually just have that little girl deliver all the medical news at the hospital. <laughs> just walks in. We couldn't find a heart for your transplant. You want one of my old bears? These things. <laughs> this isn't the worst thing I've had to do this week. Um, so <laughs> then after the sermon, she she tells the uh, like the the hooker comes in to have a meeting with the pastor where she just decides to tell him about the wrestler that saved her like a superhero, um, right. and he accidentally slips up and and gives away his secret identity i guess mm -hmm. right and that never plays out that never matters to the movie no nope. no no because she says like oh i have some friends who could use your help and like you think there's going to be a montage of him like beating up pimps and helping street hookers but no no nope. just just he's just like Rip. <laughs> he's like yeah okay but uh, how many are there? And she's like, well, just the one. It's Jojo. So I guess just beat him up again. Just keep, <laughs> just keep beating him up. And uh, I've got plenty of sex workers for the daycare. <laughs> I'll pay back. We'll get to that, too. Oh, my God. But then so like the wife, they're trying to figure out how they're going to pay the bills. And the wife hands him like a book. And when she opens it up, his wrestling mask is in it. Right. She wants him to right. fight again. And I just wrote, that is the least fun reason a wife ever gave her husband a mask. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted her so badly to be like, wrong page. He turns it over. It's a gimp mask on the next page. She's like, That's the one. Here's the This will cheer us up. <laughs> the safe word is Baptist. Open up. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, shit. You got to give him a phone or something to drop. <laughs> Pro tips. <laughs> <laughs> it was that one time. It was that one time. Whatever. One time is one time too many. So I think we all had a fun time by the end. <laughs> Whatever. Look, we're not trying to hold 20 minutes of action against Heath. <laughs> We're going to have to talk to Andrew again and have a little meeting about whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so, but instead of all the good gimp mask possibilities, instead, she's basically saying, you know, let's face it, you're a shitty pastor, but you can roll around with other men in your underwear like a champ. So uh, I think we should go back to that. She also says, you couldn't embarrass me if you tried. Yeah. And I wrote in my notes, I could embarrass you if I tried. <laughs> oh, I, I wrote top of the list of shit. Anna Bosnick will never say to her husband. <laughs> so, <laughs> basically the same note. <laughs> but so, yeah, now he's going to wrestle again. Hooray. So I guess since this movie has fully diffused all the conflict it created in the first two acts, there's no real need for a third one. But they did one anyway. So let me see if I can give it the hard sell here. Will he turn around the congregation? Will the saint wrestle the reaper for the title? Will he win that fight? Of fucking course he will. I mean, why the hell do we even need the rest of this movie? Find out the answer to that question and less when we return for the inevitable conclusion of The Masked Saint. And on that note, as your pastor, I have a little confession to make to the entire congregation. Oh, oh, fuck. Not again. It, Jesus, was it my kid? It was my kid last time. This is well, bullshit. Uh, okay, people, but, people. Preacher molested some kids. Let's go. Back door. You know the drill. Who needs scripts? Does anybody um, not have a script? I need a uh, script. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I didn't fuck a kid. Um, didn't fuck a kid. I'm a, I'm a professional wrestler, and I've been fighting crime on the side as a vigilante. That's what I was going to say. And 
fucked my kid. He's also a wrestler no, for no, some no, reason. I don't know what that. Oh no, 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 just 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 the wrestling stuff. I'm, it, oh, just that. Oh, huh. Oh, thank God. He, oh, false alarm. Wait, you, you guys aren't mad? I f- are you are you kidding me? We're we're just relieved. I, I can tell you, man. My kid's been molested like f- four, f- maybe five times at this point. So. Yeah, yeah. You're totally fine. Do your archery thing or whatever it is. You uh, wrestling. Right, yeah, totally right. fine. Yeah. Cool, That's great. Cool. Yeah, uh, good sermon, Pastor. See you next Sunday. Uh, okay. Wow. Um, glad glad you guys took this so well. So, why do why do people keep molesting your kid though? No idea. I, just a sexy kid, I guess. Yeah, we're back for a second helping here because apparently we're not allowed to tag in the guys from Cogdes. When we left, left our hero, he was uh. <laughs> He was going to start wrestling again. So we get a, a an opening third act montage. It's one of those good old-fashioned preaching slash wrestling montages. And it is epic. So <laughs> in this universe, wrestling is real. So he's just kicking the shit out of all those people for Jesus, right? I, I guess, yes. <laughs> um, in this universe. And they're talking to each other about it, about, like, taking it easy. But that doesn't make any sense because wrestling's real. It, in this movie, I guess. Yeah, again, they were all over the map on whether wrestling was real or not within this film. There should have been a pimp-themed wrestler. He should have just oh. been a wrestler instead of a, just a, a pimp and a actor wrestler. Oh, that like a super awesome. committed. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> also, this is where the Reaper is watching him wrestle and says, I've seen more meat in a cheese sandwich. Yeah. The with- Eli Bosnick story. <laughs> 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 we all had a note on that. Yeah. He also fights a bear. At what? Yes. Uh, yep. Yeah. He fights a man in a bear head. Who makes like authentic bear noises, <laughs> which right. was very <laughs> shocking. Yes. I want to see that guy's backstory. Like he's a rabbi. He's a local rabbi. And he's like, you know, I'll be the bear guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the they'll make fun guy. of me for being bald. And uh <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> So, and at the same time, of course, as he's, he's winning his wrestling matches, we also see him getting better and better at pasting. Uh, he says multiple words over and over again. And of course, we also have to see that the, the pimp Jojo in this montage is completely whoreless. All of the whores. <laughs> <laughs> have now gone to be teachers at the Sunday school. Again, your children deserve to be raped, people. I mean, you they, they know you deserve to have your children raped. They're innocent victims. You are making this. Is that really? I mean, could that? And, and, and you know that it fucking could, right? Because a church daycare has zero legal restrictions on it, essentially. So you know they could just round up all the street whores. And ma- that's what they did in their own movie. <laughs> They're proud of it. Unfucking believable. Yeah. Went with the uh, went with the street hookers. I- I'm just glad that they didn't have a big heroin problem in the city. Otherwise, it would have been like, yeah, kids, this is Doctor Scoops. Uh, he's gonna be watching you today. All right, kids, you just gotta fall asleep between your own knees. I love you. <laughs> I also love the super subtle way they have of introducing the fact that that Chris, the 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 main character, is now suffering from the sin of pride, which is just him standing up at his podium or whatever, going, "I'm very proud of myself." <laughs> yeah, subtle guys, <laughs> well done. So then the mo- montage is over. We get him sitting in his office or whatever, you know, whatever it is that pastors do in their office, other than beating off. And he hears some singing coming from the other room, and it's so melodious or whatever that he has to go and check it out. And it turns out that it's abuse wife from yeah. earlier. Right. And she's such a good singer that apparently that's going to make the entire choir good at singing? In a week. Immediately. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he offers, he says, wow, you're amazing. Will you be our new choir director? And Miss Beasley's like, oh, I thought I was the choir director. And I wrote in my notes, shut up, Miss Beasley. You blew it, okay? You blew your <laughs> shot. You <laughs> blew your shot, Miss Beasley. <laughs> Next, we're going to see Mrs. Beasley's legs just swinging back and forth in the background of the next scene or something. <laughs> yeah. it, it does seem like a dick move. Miss Beasley's standing right there. Like, at least he could take her to the side and say, you know, kind of let Miss Beasley think she's in church. No, but no, he's like, fuck Miss Beasley. She's out. There's just a rafter in the church with Beasley was here carved in it. <laughs> <laughs> 
so now we get um, uh, Chris hanging out with Miss Edna again, the magic black lady from earlier. And I just love this moment, right? Like he's talking about how great the church is doing now that he's wrestling to bring in all the money. And he says to her, he's like, and now Judd stays in the back where he belongs. To which the black woman says, yeah, I kind of heard those words before. And I'm, I totally agree. I'm just like, yeah, that's a bad choice of words. Dude. He might you as well have up. said like Rosa Parks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Too much pride. Too much uh, White Lives Matter pride. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but here's the thing. Like, I don't think the movie did a great job of conveying his pride because he's just proud of the fact that he's bringing in money and doing a good job as a pastor. Like, we don't see him doing... But then in this scene, he turns instantaneously like he took a magic potion. Because she's like, wow, it's weird that you would use that term to a black person and not understand that. <laughs> and then his daughter comes in and she's like, can I have an ice cream? And he's like, I will fuck you! And she's like, eh! <laughs> And it's just that weird... It's just a weird turn for this character to take because... We need that Christian movie bingo card of a busy dad is a bad dad. Yes, uh huh, yeah. exactly. I think he's on the juice here because. <laughs> and the next thing that happens is he walks outside and he hears Ray yelling at uh, the singer lady wife, mm -hmm. and he he goes, he just screams at Ray. He walks over, he's like, Ray, come here, come out here, like Bill Cosby, like here, come here, <laughs> here. <laughs> And again, Ray gets like Jason Bourne. He just walks out like all confused <laughs> and <laughs> takes a scolding. Well, oh, what's amazing sorry. is his smack talk to Ray. He's like, Ray, your daughter. He's like, it's supposed to be a fighting words moment. But he's like, your daughter and wife are finding a connection to the divine, Ray. All right. In the words of Aquinas, they found a higher self. Do you understand me, motherfucker? Read this C.S. Lewis journal. I will bring you. And he pushes him. Yeah. Like he's, as he's giving him this theological fucking discourse, he pushes him. And I'm like, dude, like, like you should now be arrested. Probably. You just came into that guy's fucking night yard and physically abused him. Also, let's remember Ray beats his wife. So what he does is he yells at Ray, embarrasses him, and then leaves him in the house with the yes. woman who he has just directed his attention to. Yes. <laughs> If only there were a way to show me that you were a real man. All right, bye. No one's going to protect him. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> so, yeah, so now he's all huffy. He's yelled at his neighbor and threatened violence and been mean to his wife and told the black lady that she does kind of smell different. And so now he's all upset with himself. So he goes to his, his wrestling match, but he just can't do it, right? And my music note here, again, the music is getting progressively worse as we go, is simply, man, these notes are harder to take with slit wrists. <laughs> <laughs> my music note was, my dog believes in Jesus, my truck believes in Jesus. <laughs> I'm the canjo guy at the party. Yeah, right. <laughs> ding, 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 sit on my lap. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> oh, so instead of going to his wrestling match, he decides to go to this diner. That's clearly empty. And at first I thought they were setting up that the waitress was fucking somebody in the back, which I was kind of into because she was pretty hot. I, I like the waitress mm. quite a bit. Yeah. yeah, she was cute. And, and he orders, he has the weirdest order in the world. Oh, it's, he's the worst. Yeah, fuck this guy. <laughs> oh, he got, can I have a burger? No bun. Can't have gluten. No bun. Not because I have celiacs. I, I'm just the worst. No bun. <laughs> also some fish sauce on the side. Yeah, what? And he's confused. He doesn't know what he's trying to ask. It's like. White ketchup, but not no, at all. It's tartar what? sauce. It's tartar sauce. So, sperm latte. <laughs> <laughs> the correct answer to this is, get the fuck out of my restaurant. Yes. You're the worst. Yes. Because <laughs> the waitress has this weird meta moment where she's like, do you mean tartar sauce? And he's like, yeah, that's the fish sauce. And she's like, how old are you? And he's like, and a juice. <laughs> and <apple> juice. <laughs> Like, why leave that moment in where your preacher doesn't know the words for Turner? It doesn't add anything to the movie except nope. that your preacher is insane. Yeah, it just makes him that much dumber. Do you yeah. have Ecto Cooler? Or whatever. <laughs> Crazy billionaire remake. We just add in a bunch of moments where he doesn't know the words for very normal things. <laughs> It's like, Pastor, will you hand me the, uh, the smashy top heavy in metal and then middle is wood? Do, it's do you mean sitting on that butt resting device over at the fuck? Yeah. Are you having a stroke, Chris? Yeah, since 1997. No one's noticed. <laughs> 
my face has been slowly collapsing in on itself like a black <laughs> I'm hole. Surprised you people haven't noticed. So, but what's really going on here now is the waitress is hinting that she's being robbed and the whole restaurant has been taken hostage in one of those diner hostage takings that happens in life. <laughs> Yeah. Right. Based it, on a true story. It y'all. takes Chris forever to pick up on this. Oh, yeah. She's like, <laughs> I'm being robbed. He's like, tartar sauce, please, on the <laughs> side. What are you saying to me? I don't understand. I want a burger with no bun. <laughs> you and me both, right? <laughs> oh, the prices. Anyways, burger, no bun. <laughs> you turn on the TV. I want to watch the game. <laughs> yeah, I hear they're really stealing the tournament this year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Probably. I wanted a whole scene where he just eats his burger and then orders dessert, (laughs) sends it back, gets a different dessert, (laughs) takes a long, ponderous shit in the bathroom. (laughs) But it's even stupider, though. Okay, so he figures out... Now, keep in mind, this movie was made in 2016. We're not reaching back into 1983. So this man has a goddamn cell phone. We've seen it. So he realizes that they're being robbed and that people are being ta- uh, uh, are held hostage in the back of this restaurant. His solution is not go outside, call the police. It is go outside, put on his wrestling mask <laughs> so that he can run around back and beat the guys up as they're leaving, right? Everything is over. The, 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 there was going to be no violence here. It was just a couple hundred fucking dollars out of a diner till at one in the morning. That was all that was at stake here. He puts his life on the fucking line to, to, to wrestle two guys with guns. And well... One of them fires at him. He w- runs back there. One of them yeah. comes out very clearly. He's like, click, 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 and the gun's empty or whatever. But then he manages to wrestle the gun out of his hands. It lands on the ground and fires. That's because God mm. held the bullet. Oh. That was because Jesus. Yeah, no, it's a the, pen trick that God knows. Cool. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, and then he's like, and then the bad guys are like, who are you? And oh, he, he goes, the good guy punch. He's, I'm the good guy vigilante punch. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. They're, uh, they're good guy. We'll, we'll, we'll fix that in post. We'll figure out something really great for me to have said. All right, bye. <laughs> not Batman punch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm not wearing hockey pants. <laughs> you are actually wearing hockey pants. <laughs> oh. Whoops. I am. <laughs> I'm also the world's most famous wrestler. <laughs> yes, you might, and I'm wearing my costume. So, like, and that's the thing. Like, you could imagine, like, people not wrestle, recognizing a masked wrestler, except that he's wearing the mask. Anyway. The mask. Yeah. So stupid. This movie, I wrote in my notes at this point, this movie is for fucking idiots. On every like, they, level. That's how lazy the writing had to be for the morons this movie was made for, is they were just like, who am I? I'm the good guy. And then the audience was supposed to be like, oh, okay, he's the good guy. Got it. I was pretty sure he was the good guy. Okay, I'm glad he cleared that up. <laughs> Write that down. G-U-D. <laughs> G. Ways of taking notes. So, and then we get the scene where, like, the waitress is with the, uh, the, the black detective guy from earlier, um, and it, it, she's like, he's trying to, like, figure out who this masked vigilante is, um, and all she remembers is his babbling black lady book. The, the, yeah. she, she remembers he had a blue book with a white cross on it. Also, he wore the mask of the most popular wrestler <laughs> in the world. <laughs> who now lives in your town as a pastor, and you've met. <laughs> So, like, a scene later, we get him taking his uh, daughter to the ice cream shop in the middle of winter, um, and the detective just happens to see him on the street, and he happens to be carrying his old lady babble book, so the detective figures out that he actually is the vigilante. Right. And and then he, he manages to, like, trick him into showing up at the police station. Yeah. Can't, can't cops just tell you to show up at the police station they, they or like can. question you right now that I'm talking to you directly? Well, he's trying to be cutesy about it, I guess, because he's like, oh, do you want a donut? And the little girl's like, I'd love a donut. And he's like, sure. I'll tell you what. Here's a fun way to do it. Why don't you and your dad get into the back of my car? I'll put your dad in these <laughs> shiny bracelets I got for him. And then we'll do a police lineup, which you won't notice right behind you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. He tricks him into a lineup, too. Now, I, I want to point out, too, that as this scene, like when they when he Invites him to the police station is going on. We also get a scene where Jojo the pimp is like looking on and we're supposed to realize that Jojo the pimp has now figured out who he is. 
We are never given a reason why JoJo the Pimp would have known that. Well, JoJo has a lot of time on his hands because there are no more prostitutes. Oh, right. So right, he just yeah. trails main characters until he figures it out. He just crochets now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's healthy. Um, so yeah, so like, so he shows up at the police de- uh, department and he thinks they're just getting a tour of it, but it turns out that the, that the, uh, tr- cop was tricking him into taking part in a lineup. And I'm like, yeah, that's. That's legal. That's how that works. I'm sure Andrew would back him up on that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just like, oh, yeah. And would you stand here real quick? And yeah, just for funsies, why don't you turn sideways? Yeah. <laughs> All right, take a picture. All right. Hey, I got an idea. You sign this confession and I'll sign this one. Oh, I'm the master vigilante. Okay, your turn. Oh, we're having so much fun. Uh, but luckily for us, the waitress acts like I do every time I get stopped for speeding because I'm a white guy. (laughs) And she's just like, fuck the police. (laughs) Yeah. Also, and, and I don't know what the point of this is, but they also like, um, the, the little girl wants her donut that the cop promised. And I guess he's eating all the donuts like a dick. I don't know. I, I didn't get that. You see, it was just a trap. So he's like, oh, sorry, no donuts. But next time, and he turns to the dad and he's like, and there will be a next time. (laughs) And I wanted so badly for the little girl to be like, it's fine. We can just get one on our way home. You're a strange, (laughs) you're a strange person. And of course, we have to go back to the where the where the uh, cop tells him good luck, and he's like, "I don't believe in luck. I believe in real stuff, like carpenters that wrestle pig demons with magic." You know right. that. And this is where the detective reveals to us that he's an atheist detective, even though he wears a giant crucifix. Oh, right, because yeah. that was his brother's crucifix, yeah. and his brother died. That's why he atheisted that little girl out of those donuts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So and, and so now they're heading home from the police station, and they get a tr- uh, call from mom, tell them to come straight to the church because the pimp done fucked their church up. <laughs> and the pimp, the pimp seems to have he done he did some some spray painting, mm-hmm. and he he also spread out pieces of paper very evenly across the floor. <laughs> I loved how family friendly as graffiti was too. Yeah, it was like, yeah. go home. This is my my town. Kindly leave, please. Yeah. Like, probably genuine graffiti from Canada. Oh, no. <laughs> boo! <laughs> that you mention it, <laughs> and it's so stupid because everyone in the in the movie reacts like the church has been burned to the ground. Not right, the that there were corpses minutes. hanging through it. Yeah, right, exactly. Like Daredevil's been through just hanging people from the rafters, but instead, <laughs> it's just like three pieces of paper and some paint to wash off. Yeah, it was the Punisher <laughs> who hung him, by the way. But yeah, um, so and 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 then I guess he realizes, oh, it must have been the pimp that did this. So he has to give his wife the old "I'm secretly a superhero" talk. She gets very upset, and I just wrote in my notes. I'm like, when Anna gets the "I get oiled up and wear a mask" talk from her husband, this is going to be a lot different. Yeah. It's go a <laughs> much different way. That talk went like, "I know, I can see you. Don't <laughs> sit on the couch." <laughs> I did try to fight our neighbors for being Hispanic, though. She was mad oh, about oh, yeah. that. <laughs> Not in this neighborhood. He's building a wall on their door. Yeah, exactly. It just says Trump 2016. Here's on your front bill. Of it. <laughs> Assholes. You're going to pay for it. So, Who are you? I'm the good guy. You are very clearly no, not. I don't. don't think so. You seem like a Trump voter to We're me. We're Italian. So- What's happening? <laughs> Same difference. <laughs> so now we, we also get this quick, like this scene, the vandalism scene ends, like the mom and the daughter ho- leaving a huff or whatever. And then Miss, they have the like the Miss Beasley scene where she's like, we're going to find the little turds that did this and hang them upside down and slit their throat <laughs> something good. Right. I feel like the actress used the N word several times before they got this clean <laughs> take. <laughs> you get that feeling? <laughs> I had the same thing in my notes. <laughs> I definitely had to, to, to do this. They had to cut several takes with racial slurs at this yeah. point. Yes, absolutely. Cut, cut. Okay, and again, all you say is turds. Yeah, turds and Jew boys. All right. <laughs> That's lunch. So, and, okay, so now we get uh, Pastor Chris's mea culpa, right? Um, and he, where he has to come and tell the whole congregation that the reason that the graffiti is there and that they didn't sweep up all these little pieces of paper on the floor 
is because he was too prideful. Now, we alluded to this scene in the in the interstitials, obviously, but like it's so bizarre because he buries the lead, right? He's like, I have a confession to make. And it's not like I am a superhero that beat up a pimp and he came back. He goes, I've been a wrestler the whole time. It's like, is that the most pertinent information here? Yeah, and the church hates it. The oh, church yeah. is like, you get out of our town. Here, guitar and feather him. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe that they, 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 and they're just so mortified like this would be a normal thing. Like the first thing they wouldn't be is like, wait, sorry, you're a wrestler? <laughs> right. That's yeah. kind of cool. Like in your free time? <laughs> and and you've been paying the church's bills by having a real job and that this is what you're apologizing for? I just want to be clear. <laughs> okay. Well, right, because the crowd starts yelling like, that's not enough. You lied to us. I'm like, what, they, what do they think? What are they supposed to think happened right now? Well, there is they, a cut scene where everyone stood up and was like, wait, 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 before you preach, are you a wrestler? And he was like, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> I would never wrestle. <laughs> So and then of course the only person that'll stand up for him is the hooker, mm-hmm. um, and except but then Judd shows up. Remember the evil philanthropist from earlier? Judd shows up to save the day, and I don't understand. What, I guess we're supposed to think that Judd learned to have faith because of the faith, 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 pastor right. things. I, I also <laughs> there's a crazy moment that I have to point out. There's a woman. She looks like a Mary Kay doll. Yeah. She looks like a Mary Kay monster. She's just like a, a giant congealed blob of Mary Kay. And <laughs> within 30 seconds of herself being like, you get out of our town, she goes, he deserves a second chance. Yeah. If you watch the movies with us, watch that moment. It's the craziest thing in the world. They obviously like ran out of actresses and they were like, well, we're already paying her to talk. So she <laughs> says like, that's not good enough. And then Judd says one line. He's like, I don't know. And she's like, give him another chance. <laughs> shut up, you! No, you shut up! Bring it on, bitch! I just wanted her to be fighting herself in the background. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Arguing with her reflection in the fucking pool about whether they should steal Frodo's bread. Um, and and so and then of course he leads him in prayer and 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 he says the words in order and stuff now because he's good at it. Um, and just as everybody's trying to figure out if they'll be okay, um, he brings on the the choir, which now has their new choir leader who can kind of sing sort of good which means that now everyone is perfectly in tune and all the tone deaf people are good choir and, singers and now it's the mormon tabernacle choir yeah exactly yeah, you just exactly. need one yeah. yeah and of course we cut to the african grinch outside who's not happy at all about all this singing fucking jojo's <laughs> outside going what they're still worshiping jesus in that thing well like did what what, what is he mad at like did he expect them to demolish the building that day <laughs> and, like, run them out of town? What, Just what? implodes. <laughs> Good. <laughs> now I can go back to my non-existent hook. I don't understand. <laughs> Why didn't they make this into a Planned Parenthood yet? I'm angry about this. <laughs> what? I better call my cousin who runs the ACLU. <laughs> <laughs> That's next week. So, and, and then also we have to get at the end of this, like the mom who is mad at him for being a superhero comes back and, and, and they make up. And I just bring it up because I like it when she calls him daddy. She does. She calls him daddy at one point And I turned to Anna and did a like, ah, ah. And Anna was like, no, nah, come on now. Don't, don't ruin this. We're having a nice first night home watching a Christian movie. Don't, don't make this weird. And then of course she, I want she, half your money. <laughs> So, and then, of course, she reads his character bio to him to give him some motivation, I guess, or something. Right. She's like, you've always been good at fighting bullies. You're the man that fights bullies. And as a former bully, I just want to say I find this movie very upsetting, okay? <laughs> like, where's the bully side of this? I don't oh, I don't want to get into it. I don't want to get into Trigger it. Trigger warning, please. <laughs> so now we get him begging Nikki for a shot at the title. For and, real, like a fair but fight, yes, yes. like a real fight. He, that's what he says. He's like, I want to fight the Reaper for the title, but I want it to be a fair fight. I'm like, what would that even mean? You just want to punch at each other? That's like, that's, you got you got cast for a fucking World War II movie and said, okay, but I want it to be a real war. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to actually kill that guy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> what? And Roddy Piper is obviously confused by this. He's like, yeah, you're not very good at the difference between fake and real, are you? We've, we've been over this several times throughout your entire career and during this movie. So, no, 
Okay. <laughs> yeah, go fight him. Yeah, well, but first he has to threaten Nikki with an audit because one of the one of his uh, congregation works for the IRS, so he leverages that to illegally use the federal government to get a wrestling title. Right. What? Yeah, no, good guy extortion vigilante. He's the good guy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So now we cut to outside. Okay, so it, we see that it's going to be a cage match, which is nice because that means the movie's almost fucking over. Every wrestling movie has to end with a cage match. But first, we've got to get this bizarre fucking scene with him in the locker room and random characters showing up one after the other. <laughs> yes. This is so goddamn weird. Okay, so first of all, we see the, like, the family, like all the main characters are sitting together in a section, like at a Newsboys concert. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, we find out that Mindy, the, the abuse wife, She's there, and now because she's the choir singer, not only did she make all of those people able to sing, but her husband has stopped drinking and smoking cigarettes and abusing her. Right, and they really did their best to try to make Ray look cleaned up, but he's just a human version of butter that's been dropped on the floor, <laughs> and he just he can't. No, there's no, no second rule. You're not okay, and so they've just tried to like smooth his hair down and shave his what's left of his face slash neck slash chest, and then he's just like, I'm good now, and it's like, yeah, man, you still look like you got trapped under a car covered in mayonnaise. Like, you're not. <laughs> He's got a giant vat of Pepsi he's sipping out of the whole time. His face is turning into Wilford Brimley's as we watch. <laughs> Not good. Mike Bloomberg can kiss my ass. <laughs> um, so we, then we go to the locker room where where the saint, where Chris is getting ready. Um, but uh-oh, Jojo the pimp has showed up to murder him. Yes. Well, not really, because he's like, <laughs> now we're going to put things back the way they belong. And I wanted a montage of like him at gunpoint escorting hookers back out onto the street. <laughs> selling drugs. Like, what did, what was Jojo's plan? And you're like, now you keep, you undo all the, t- I, I need you to unbalance the economy of Can the you local area. Fuck and then- those <laughs> hookers. I don't, and then, Abuse husband shows up, right? Like, because he has said, you know, I want to thank uh, Chris for all that he's done for our family or whatever. So he comes back into the locker room hoping to catch Chris naked or something. And when he sees a black man holding a gun on him, he clearly murders him. Murders the man. Very clearly murders him with a dumbbell. Takes a 20 pound dumbbell and smashes him in the back of the head with it. As hard as he can right. in the skull. <laughs> While still holding his Pepsi. <laughs> It was like a sports center moment, like foul ball, no drops of beer lost, but murder (laughs) with a metal. (laughs) And you see, he just goes down like a wet bag of rags, but he, but Ray's holding on to his Pepsi. That's that's what I call manslaughter right there. That's what I call manslaughter. (laughs) See that drops about to fall. Whoop. He caught it and he murdered him. Whoop. (laughs) And and of course, and then right after uh, JoJo's been taken, apparently the detective has been s- staying in one of the lockers until this moment or whatever, because he just shows up out of nowhere. Um, and he goes, he turns to uh, to Ray and he goes, hey, you're that guy that abuses his wife all the time, uh, aren't you? And he goes, yeah, yeah, sorry about that. The cop doesn't do anything at all. And I'm like, okay, at least that part of the movie was realistic. Yeah. <laughs> right. Got that part right. But yeah, apparently the detective is just there to give him a pep talk. No. <laughs> well, see, they've been poker metaphoring back and forth. Yeah. Like he's been saying, like, you've been going all in and you need to just fold and you need to <laughs> <laughs> Japanese guy. I don't know, something. He's just like back and forth with poker terminology. And then finally, like, even though someone's just been murdered in front of him and he's like, don't worry, I won't hit my wife anymore. And he's like, sure, you're the first guy to ever say that to me. Bye bye. <laughs> He's like, look, what I need you to do is go out there and win that wrestling match because the movie's over if I arrest her for what just happened. Oh, that doesn't make any goddamn so, sense at all. Yeah, but apparently the keys. town needs hope or whatever. And okay. Yeah. So now we cut. Now it's time for the final battle of the Jesus movie where he's going to take on the fucking Reaper. And I love the intros, right? So Roddy Piper comes out and he's like, at, ladies and gentlemen, fighting on behalf of religion and all that is holy. Yes. Right. The guy you're all rooting for, the good guy, he will win. He <laughs> will win. 
I love he takes off his mask here too. Like that's all oh, we see what he, but isn't that for a masked wrestler, isn't that supposed to be considered like a huge humiliation to be unmasked? Uh, for luchadors, it is. A lot of masked wrestlers have taken their mask off. I just really wanted a moment where he took his mask off and the room got totally silent. And then one guy was just like, put it back on. <laughs> <laughs> you don't look good. <laughs> and also, this is not my bad hearing my ears going as I got older, because we all have this in, a, in our notes very clearly. Roddy Piper introduces the Reaper as the Raper. Yes. Unambiguously. <laughs> yeah. He's trying to say Reaper in his newfound I'm not Rowdy Roddy Piper accent. And he goes, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, the Raper. And I wanted Brock Turner to run out in his little string <laughs> He's out now. He could. He's, He's out. Could. He could do it. Yeah. Let's yeah. get him some work, huh? <laughs> Jesus. I love to. Okay, so the... the you the, get mad at me every time I suggest hiring Brock Turner. <laughs> <laughs> I love to the good guy, bad guy banter that we get at this point, because apparently the Reaper speaks only in redneck bumper stickers, and it's just all a bunch of, where's your Jesus now, preacher man? Right. He's like, if God is with you, then who will rise against you? And I wrote in my notes, Harambe? It's a romp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and uh, okay, so so they have a little bit of a wrestling match, and, and really, honestly, I expected a hell of a lot more out of this wrestling match. They're building it through the entire fucking movie, and they we get practically nothing. But at one point, like uh, the 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 Reaper body slams him so hard, he flashbacks to his daddy leaving. Right, he has a yeah. get up, you son of a bitch, because. Jesus loves you. <laughs> Very clearly, yeah. Everybody starts chanting his name or whatever. But can he get... Uh, yes, he can. He can get up and he does. Um, and, and this is the really bizarre part where, where he actually, as far as I can tell, uses a real wrestling move. Is that... Yeah, he is he uses an arm bar. That? Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> but it's also super super anticlimactic like yeah, an yeah. arm bar and a tap out is the least climactic way to end a movie because the guy's he's just like tap out or i'll break your arm and the guy's like no and he's like just seriously I'll, I'll break your arm this is pretty easy to do hips versus the elbow and he's like oh okay, okay. Tap yeah out. okay i'll do point. that and, and that's then, it. yeah and then he taps out yes <laughs> i thought he was gonna i because it's so common i was like okay that's not the climax he's the reaper's gonna get up and be like saint and then he's gonna do the faith breaker to end it which is a big showy knockout move right <laughs> right he's gonna do the faith <laughs> nope it's it it's over nope i out thought this movie why would you <laughs> not finish with the fucking faith breaker <laughs> so why right. why I waited for the faith breaker. They introduced the faith breaker and then they don't end the movie with the faith breaker. He has the signature. There's no other reason for us to bother with him. Yeah, but no, but it's an arm bar where the Reaper taps out. Yeah. There is one moment that I absolutely love from this, which is everyone's cheering because he's won, and the secretary, uh, the Lumpkin's like, he tapped out, he tapped out, and the secretary turns to him and goes, I have no idea what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. It's like, why was that in the movie again? <laughs> I'm not really into wrestling. This is all <laughs> a little much. <laughs> We do get the tagline at the end, though, again, the I'm not a saint, I'm just a man uh, thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. And the bad guy's like, you need a lesson on Venn diagrams. <laughs> okay, <it's laughs> <not bad. laughs> And, of course, the movie can't end yet because we need to close on a little more old black lady wisdom. Um, and it's, the, it's just the most banal wisdom. you get. It's like a disappointing fortune cookie that doesn't work with the in-bed game. <laughs> she might as well just be reading lucky numbers like 13, 39, <laughs> 47. I'm magical black lady. How to speak she, Chinese. She goes, yeah. you got to keep mastering it every day. And I wrote <laughs> the Eli Bosnick story. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. She also goes, you know that quote from the Boondock Saints? I've got that on the left page, but I've added a totally irrelevant statement on the right. It's literally like all that it takes a evil good man to do not do nothing. And so then her quote is, so do it. 
<laughs> yeah, so do so. Yeah, yeah, right. All that's required for evil to flourish is for good men to do nothing on one side. And her quote is, so do something. That's it. Like, that's implied by the first quote. Like, you fuck off. I want her whole book to just be great quotes on the left side and her saying very <laughs> obvious things on the right. Like, better to have lived and loved than to never have loved at all. So love. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the whole fucking thing. And of fucking course the tree would make a noise. Yeah, exactly. So, it's, and, and also I love, okay, the movie's over, whatever. And they, they come up with like the real, the saint or whatever. This guy named Chris Whaley, you know, the real masked vigilante wrestler, pastor guy who beat up a pimp with his bare acting. Um, and I, I'm just like, okay, so wait. This entire and it's based on a book that he wrote, right? This entire movie is based on a book that this guy wrote about himself being a masked superhero. <laughs> and I guess it's because he's like, you know what? I've been a pastor. I've seen the kind of bullshit these people believe. So why the fuck not? Yeah, exactly. might as well. <laughs> and then of course we get the in memory of Roddy Piper to close it all off. Yeah, this movie killed Roddy Piper. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I like to think that something killed Roddy Piper before he could see this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Some family member or friend was like, "Hey, Roddy, drink this this vial of clear liquid." No, <laughs> you, I just was watching dailies, and I, I want you to, I want you to remember. No, it's a celebration. A, yeah, <laughs> good to know that the fatal heart attack wasn't the low point for Roddy. Well, unfortunately, <laughs> we weren't allowed to tap out of this one early. We had to make it to the last bell. But rather than insult thumbs by asking you to apply one to this piece of shit, I'm simply going to ask you this. Can you describe a wrestling hold to me that would be less pleasant to be trapped in than this movie was to watch? Oh, uh, I'm going to say sleeper hold with Dennis Hastert. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. That was not. If fun. you move with him, it's it's not as unpleasant. If you move, you have to kind of shift your hips. You move. You you stay still. He moves, or or vice versa. Vice versa. It's got to yeah, be one of the important. <laughs> Uh, can I go with suplexed by Rosie O'Donnell? <laughs> you know, I feel like the, the you'd get a, a rug burn from the wool. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that'll do the trick. And while that does it for our review of The Mass Saint, that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to tinkle some dingle over next week's show. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. God's Club. The people are screaming for that one. We're giving them what they want here. Recently added to Netflix. <laughs> yep, yep. You can watch along if you uh, hate yourself. <laughs> it's a movie about Stephen Baldwin's quest to open his eyes up all the way <laughs> uh, and start a Bible club at a local high school <laughs> against the objections of everyone in the atheist town he lives in. Okay, yeah, right, right. <laughs> They show you the whole fucking movie in the preview. I don't know if there's anything left to watch. I think I could just wing it. But uh, also, and I have to point this out. Okay, I'm sure she'll come up when we actually do the movie. This preview contains the ugliest human I've ever seen. There's a crowd shot. There's an old lady that looks like a close up of a dead thing's asshole. It was it's, it's like I've never been more excited by anything I've seen in one of these previews. Well, I have a lot of dead things assholes around my apartment. So when the time comes, I'll compare. <laughs> if you're not our fan on Facebook already, I'll put a picture. of <laughs> Give you an idea. Yeah. Also, heads up to Jamie. We want Stephen Baldwin's breasts. Of so course. give you the <laughs> little time to get ahead on that. Bring them to me. <laughs> Milk him. <laughs> <laughs> so with milking Stephen Baldwin to look forward to, I guess we can bring episode 55 to a merciful close. Once again, huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to every episode. You can also help us a ton by leaving us a five-star review on iTunes and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist and The Skeptocrat, available on iTunes, Stitcher, and wherever else podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. All the music used in this episode was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Drafts on Mars and was used with permission. And if you like what you hear, hear more by following the link on the show notes to this episode. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions promising to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. Jesus and my wife believes in Jesus too. <laughs> the Reaper hired an actor to Tanya Harding, the Iceman, which made it perfectly legal. <laughs>
After learning the important Act 3 lesson about pride, the saint went on to write a book about how awesome he is. (laughs) Rowdy Piper died rather than seeing this movie. (laughs) Good for him. Good for him. (laughs) It was the right choice, Rowdy. It really was. In my truck, I'm going to be a Diabetes, cats, now need drug lumpkin. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle in a Thunderstorm, LLC, copyright 2016, all rights reserved.